What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video on the Crown Tundra DLC and the upcoming VGC season, aka Series 7. Apologies for not getting up uh, to upload too much this weekend guys, I ended up going home and I didn't actually have my microphone with me so I didn't want to upload a video with my crappy, uh, <laughs> my crappy webcam mic. So here we are today. What I want to do is I want to do some like last minute speculation on these Galarian birds uh, because I feel like they're actually going to make a huge impact in the upcoming VGC season. Essentially we got three of the best max air streamers in the game as DLC so I feel like they're going to be phenomenal Pokemon. So if you guys are excited for that do me a favor leave a like on this video let's try to shoot for 200 likes today and comment down below which of the Galarian birds you think will be the best and you know just go ahead and order them because I'll be ordering them at the end of the video like let me know uh, your order as like worst to best Galarian birds. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. And I suppose the best way of doing this would be by starting with Articuno and working our way numerically down to Moltres. Now here's the thing about previous um, previous regional forms. So if we take a look at something like Ninetales, Ninetales and Ninetales Alola are actually two pretty different Pokemon, but at the same time they're, they're similar. So if we look at Ninetales, right? Its base stats are 73, 76, 75, 81, 100, and 100. Now with Galar or with Alolan Ninetales, what they did actually is they took from the stat that it wasn't using. 76 attack, that's a stat that Ninetales just does not use since it's a better special attacker, especially with its ability drought. Um, and they said, well, Al Alolan Ninetales is also going to be a special attacker, so why don't we, instead of, you know, just buffing the heck out of it, like putting 100 in each stat, why don't we just take from the stat that it's not using anyway? So it went from 76 attack to 67, uh, and where that went actually was in boosting its speed up to 109, making it competitively viable, because if Alola Ninetales had the exact same stats as Ninetales, it would not even be close to viable. It would never get the veil up. So 109 is actually a solid uh, base speed tier. It ties with Kartana, and I expect them to do something similar with the, Gal or with the Galarian birds, because I feel like they want to make these things viable. The birds have been in the games for a long time. They're generation one Pokemon, which means their stats are pretty suboptimal to say the least. If we look at Articuno, 90 HP, 85 attack, 100 defense, 95 special attack, 125 special defense, and 85 speed with an ice flying typing, seems pretty mediocre. Like it would be good on any other Pokemon, but the fact that it's ice flying makes it so mediocre because it's defensively doing nothing and they, effect they effectively gave this thing like some of the bulkiest stats of any Pokemon. 90 HP, 100 defense, 125 special attack, or special defense with good special attack and decent speed. It's, it's not doing much, right? Um, Articuno would have been better off with like Zapdos' stats, but they did not do that and now we're stuck with this garbage Pokemon. So what I expect them to do actually, and what I've done, is I actually, let me pull up my notes because I don't have it in front of me right now, the image I made. Um, I actually expect them to take five away from its attack, sort of like what they did with um, Ninetales and Alola Ninetales, and also take five away from its defense, because I don't think that they're going to be going too defensive this thing. It's still going to be like defensive, because you know it's Articuno, uh, and I think they're going to put it in its special attack to boost it up to 105, which will allow it to be more threatening, since you know it's also got the ability competitive, which uh, will boost its special attack by two stages anytime you low an enemy lowers any of its stats. So uh, that'll make it so like even when it's not competitive boosted, it's still somewhat threatening because if it weren't competitive boosted, base 105 is really, really garbage. There'd be like no reason to run this thing over Mail and Didi, which is not only faster, but also hits harder and has psychic terrain. So because it's competing with Mail and Didi as a psychic type on your team, they will likely make it so this thing has at least equivalent special attack. Uh, so I think that's where they're going to sort of redistribute the stats. Um, I also think that Articuno is probably, probably going to be one of the better leads in VGC. I think it's a decent Dynamax target as well, and I'll explain why. Uh, some of the most common leads in VGC are Intimidator, so like Hitmontop and Landorus Therian, which Galarian Articuno will more likely than not have a pretty positive matchup against. And the reason being is because with the ability competitive, whenever someone intimidates on the lead, uh, you're going to get plus two to your special attack, which will make your max airstream super, super threatening. So if you Dynamax this thing, go for max airstream. It's going to be able to sweep entire teams. Along with that, um, its max psychic move is going to be pretty threatening. And the fact that it's an Articuno means it's likely going to keep some of its you know, it's old stab moves that are no longer stabbed, so it'll likely keep some of the ice moves. It'll probably get freeze dry, it'll probably get blizzard, it'll probably get ice beam, which makes it have a positive matchup against Landers Therian and some of the other birds that we're going to be seeing in the video today. So I think it's going to be a decent Pokemon, uh, but I don't think it's going to be 
absolutely phenomenal. It still struggles in the matchup against Lander since it, since it can only really hit it with its flying moves. Along with that, um, the fact that it benefits from Max Airstream, but not really much from Max Mindstorm because it's not going to be touching the ground and thus does not get any Psychic Terrain boosts is sort of a huge hit to it. Uh, you'd really rather have a grounded Psychic type Pokemon since they actually benefit from setting up Psychic Terrain. This thing isn't even immune to Sucker Punch because of that, so yeah, that's a huge hit to it. I think it's going to be a pretty decent Pokemon, but I think after a while, after like the initial popularity, you know, sort of goes away, it'll fall off. I still like it a lot. I think it's a really cool design and I'm excited to use it in my first couple of teams, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a great Pokemon. Next up we have Zapdos. Now if we look at Zapdos' stats, it's got 90 HP, 90 attack, 85 defense, 125 special attack, 90 special defense, and 100 speed. With Galarian Zapdos coming around, they actually described it as being a super, super strong physical attacker. Um, in fact, it's actually a fighting flying type with the ability Defiant. Its signature move is Thunderous Kick, which, oh, I should have mentioned this with Galarian Articuno. Its signature move is basically just a psychic move with a chance to freeze. Nothing too strong. Uh, but the freezing chance, I really hope it's less than 10%, because if it's more than 10%, we're going to have some issues with that Pokemon. But yeah, back to Zapdos. Uh, its signature move is Thunderous Kick, which seems to be a guaranteed lowering of the defense stat, uh, because it doesn't say May, it says it lowers the defense. So I think it's going to be a really strong move, uh, likely weaker than close combat, but I think people will run it over close combat for the guaranteed defense drop. Uh, close combat is 120 base power, where Thunderous Kick, I'm assuming, is going to be somewhere around 80, maybe 85, uh, since it does have that guaranteed drop. Um, I think this thing is actually going to be a huge menace in the metagame. Now, the reason being is Fighting Flying is amazing coverage. You're hitting Steel types, you're hitting Rock types, you're hitting Dark types, you're hitting uh, Bug types, you're hitting Fighting types. There aren't many things this thing can't hit, especially when you consider the fact that it will likely also keep Wild Charge, which is one of its old stab moves, which is a physical electric move. So that's going to be really huge for hitting those bulky waters. So what I did when I redistributed its stat spread is I took uh, its special attack and I actually moved it over to its physical attack since it's described as a physical attacker so that 125 went over to the physical attack stat and then the 90 that would have been its special attack set i actually took 10 away from that and i put it into its speed tier because 110 is actually a phenomenal speed tier within this metagame it isn't disgustingly fast but it is faster than things like kartana and the swords of justice so i expect it to be a huge menace with at the very least 110 speed since they described it as such a fast pokemon uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a phenomenal Pokemon. The fact that it's immune to Intimidate is really huge. Once again, a great lead Pokemon, uh, especially on Intimidate leads. As this one where like Articuno had a positive matchup versus Landers, this thing has an especially positive matchup against Incineroar, which is a very popular lead as well. Incineroar has Intimidate and it's a dark type. You'll probably be able to one-shot that with plus one Thunderous Kick after your Defiant boost. So this thing is going to be really scary. Uh, on top of that, Max Airstream Spam will boost its speed while Stab Max Knuckle will boost its attack. It's going to be a huge, huge threat in the metagame and I'm really excited to see it. Uh, I think that this will probably be the best of the three birds. Next up we have Galarian Moltres, which Galarian Moltres, um, well if we look at Moltres' base stats, it had 90 HP, 100 attack, 90 defense, 125 special attack, 85 special defense, and 90 speed. Honestly, if we look at the way to describe Galarian Moltres, let, let me go over it real quick. It's a dark flying type with the ability Berserk, which is a ability that makes it so when you're down to half of your HP, uh, you'll actually get a special attack boost of one stage. So, you know, likely people are going to run a Citrus Berry, so you get that twice off in one match. Uh, its signature move is Fire Wrath, which is basically just a powered up Dark Pulse, I assume. It's a dark special move with a chance to flinch. Likely a powered up Dark Pulse, otherwise it's, you know, just Dark Pulse. Um, I would assume it's anywhere from 9100 base power, but if we look at the way they describe it and just the moves they've introduced to the game, I expect this thing to get lash out. I expect it to get a whole bunch of strong physical dark moves. I think that Moltres' regular stat spread is pretty spot on for what we're going to see for Galarian Moltres. I don't think they're actually going to redistribute anything, um, just because it just seems appropriate to make this thing a mixed attacker. It's apparently like a very malevolent Pokemon, uh, probably wouldn't mind getting its hands dirty or its, you know, its beak, its claws, its talons. Um, it's probably going to be a mixed attacker. But it'll be leaning more towards the special attack stat since they do describe it as, you know, using a dark aura with uh, fiery wrath. So I assume it's going to be a special attacker. Uh, along with that, we've already seen that Dark Flying is a phenomenal typing. We've seen it defensively used uh, on Mandibuzz, and we've seen it 
offensively used on Eveltal in previous VGC formats, uh, Eveltal in particular with 2019 and 2016, and Mandibuzz more in 2018. So like Mandibuzz, I actually expect this thing to want to be more of a bulky Pokemon. This thing would be more offensive than Mandibuzz, don't get me wrong, uh, but I expect this thing to probably be paired up with Tapu Lele a lot. Uh, I think that because it's such a bulky Pokemon, it'll likely run a Psychic Seed similar to what or similar to what Mandibuzz did, and just sit next to Tapu Lele, eat up hits, set up Tailwinds, but be more of an offensive Pokemon that actually checks sort of some of Tapu Lele's um, biggest uh, threats, which those do include Cortana. So with this thing having probably keeping its uh, its fire type stabs with uh, Heat Wave, Flamethrower, etc. I think it's actually going to be a really solid Pokemon. Um, I expect this thing to be really good, and it's also a very decent Dynamax option, uh, since the Max Darkness lowering special defense combos so well into its already really, really good special attack. Well, you know, supposedly good special attack. Uh, so I expect this thing to be a really solid Dynamax target. It'll be able to lower special defense for its partners. It'll be able to lower special defense for itself. Max Airstream spam is always good. This thing is going to be a threat in the metagame, and I'm really excited to see it. Uh, losing its fire typing is probably the best thing Moltres could have done. Becoming, you know, dark flying is just really, really good for it. It does gain that fairy weakness, but I think it can handle itself. I expect this thing to be a phenomenal Pokemon. So... In order, I would say that these birds are all very good, but in particular, the order would likely go Articuno is the worst, Moltres is the second best, and Zapdos is the best. So nothing different than what we'd seen in previous formats. Um, that being said, I would like to know what you guys think about these Pokemon in the comment section down below. Go ahead and comment your opinions on these Pokemon. Let me know if you think I got these stats spreads right. Let me know if you think I got them completely wrong. I'll, you know, any feedback's appreciated. Do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, do whatever you want, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice night. Bye.